Welcome to another episode of Big Ego Media. I've got a special guest called by the name of Mimi Monroe. How are you today? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. And yourself? Not too bad. How's the journey done? It's quick, quick, local. Local, local, local mm. settings. All right, Mimi, you're someone that's been sort of bubbling in the scene for the last couple of years. I'm not sure how long you've been gone, but I know I've noticed you now maybe the last sort of 18 months, two years or so. So we'll get to know your story and find out more about you. How it always starts with all our, of our interviews, we ask, where are you from and where did you grow up? When you say where I'm from, like area or background? Both. Or... So where you're from and where did you grow up? I grew up in Dulwich, okay. South London. Peckham. Um, yeah. Dulwich. Hey, Dulwich yeah. <laughs> it's a completely different postcode to Peckham. Definitely, definitely. Um, and my background, my parents are Jamaican and Mauritian. Okay, oh, Mar me and my fiance was in the building. That was our first holiday together. Actually, we went to Mauritius. How was it? I haven't actually been. Never been? No. Okay, can you say how it was? Go. Go. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, so, um, yeah, no, a, a beautiful place, really beautiful place. So, um, how was your parents in terms of strictness? How, how was the household? So, I grew up with both parents at home, so my parents are still married. Um, I feel like, when you have two parents at home, you kind of work one off the other. So you, you, you get to know who's more strict and who's not. So you go to the parent that you know is going to be more lenient. Mm. Yeah. No, I, I can definitely <laughs> relate to that. I'm the lenient parent, to be fair. But um, what about siblings? Do you have siblings? I've got two sisters. Were you the oldest, youngest? Middle. The middle. I mean, people also about the middle child having this sort of essence of, oh, I wasn't first and I'm not the baby. You, does that come across in, in everyday life? It's true. Like I, I, a lot of the time, I feel like I'm hard done by. Okay. Yeah. Why so? Um, do you know what it is? It's like, as a middle child, it's almost like you're... Not a mistake, but you, your parents had their first child. It was like, oh, okay. Then they had their second one. Then they had their third one, which was their last child. So it was like, you know, you just kind of fell in. <laughs> Linda. Have you ever had that conversation with them? Yeah, but not in a serious way. Like, they always say to me, I've got middle child syndrome. So. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Dulwich is not too far from Peckham. I know I joked about it earlier, but Dulwich is more seen as the more kind of conservative posh side of, not even just um, Southern, but kind of London. Dulwich is quite affluent. Yep. Was your uh, household quite affluent or how was it? Um, no, like my both my parents worked. I mean, when I was younger, my mum was in university. So at the time, only one of my parents were working. But they're not, they're not rich. There's yeah. just two incomes coming into a household, which a lot of people haven't experienced. Yeah. I mean, what was the kind of thing that was trying to get into you as a young child? Like, what was the kind of speeches about? Um, saving money. That was like a very big thing. Um, so, and also like never borrowing or owing money. Mm. So, you know, um, like credit and stuff, it was always, if you can't buy it out, right, don't buy it. Okay. That was like one of the things, um, being respect, respectable, um, being kind to all people. Mm. Yeah. Just really like nice home values, really. Mm. I mean, we always talk about in terms of the young males not having their sort of male role model in mm -hmm. their lives kind of thing. Do you think that plays a big difference in you? I guess you would know none the wise, but that's how you always growing up. But do you think that plays any difference having both parents there? A hundred percent, because people that I've met throughout like my life, growing up, friends or whatever, um, when they've come to my house, it's almost like certain things that happen, like having dinner with your family every day, it's foreign to them. It's like they've never sat down and had a, had a meal at home at dinner time. So there's certain things that I'm very grateful for because um, my, it's, oh, how can I put it? My eyes are open to a lot more things. Yeah. So uh, for me, like, I feel like it's much ben more beneficial to have both parents at home. I mean, did you kind of, with, with having, as you said, um, some of your friends didn't kind of experience that, did you have, go to their houses as well and see the difference yourself? Yeah, I've, I've been to friends' houses and it's almost like, you expect because you only see your upbringing for everyone to live how you're living until you go somewhere and see something different. And it's almost like now I, looking back, like my parents wanted me in at a certain time or they didn't want me hanging around with certain people. So 
I understand that now more looking back. Yeah. And you mentioned um, that family sit together and eat together. Is that something you still do today? Yeah, well, I live by myself at the moment. Yeah. So, that, <laughs> but yeah, like if I go to my parents' house and I have dinner, everyone's sitting at the table eating dinner together. No, that's amazing. So, school, where did you go? I went to school in Norwood. Um, no. Yeah, I won't. I won't tell you the name. But I went to all girls' school. No, tell us the name. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not telling you the name. Has got a reputation. <laughs> we're just. We're just not getting into it. Nord girls. <laughs> no, no. Was no. there Nord girls? Yeah, there was a Nord girls, but that wasn't the school. Okay. <laughs> so I'm assuming the school had a bad reputation. Then. Not a bad. No, I just. Not a bad reputation. Or is it that someone might say, "Oh, that's that Mimi girl from school." Do, okay, do, do I remember get, her. Yeah. Okay, I hear. You. I, hear you. I hear. You. So, how did you do in school? How was your education? I was a class clown, but I was I was studious because I was I'm quite intelligent. I like to think, but I don't apply myself. Yeah. So I kind of just winged it through school. I'm not someone that studies. I read a lot, but I'm not someone that studies or revises. So I kind of just winged my way through, but I made it through. Okay. Good. Good. You say you. Yeah. You, you said you said you read a lot. Is that something you still do now? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, this year I picked it up again because I kind of fell off. From it, but this year I've started reading a lot more. Give give us your favorite book of all time. Ten seconds. Of all time. Of all time. That's six seconds left. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the? I don't know. I don't. That okay, favorite what, book. Okay, what book are you currently reading? It's called Women Everywhere. What 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 is it about? Um, it's about being confident. Um, learning about your traumas and how different things affect you. Uh, yeah, it's a self help. I I read a lot of self help books. Okay, okay. Yeah. So let's get into music. Mm -hmm. Growing up, who was you listening to? Um, like my favourite rappers, um, Fabulous, Little Wayne, that's who I was listening to, like from my teenagers, that's like who was popping for me. Like Little Wayne was the guy at the time. You, you weren't really touching UK at that time? No, I didn't listen to UK music. Apart from, like, obviously, you had, like, So Solid Crew and Dizzy Rascal, and you had, like, the grime scene. But when that kind of died out, and then I want to say UK rap was rebirthed, yeah. I didn't really take it in. Okay. I was, I'm more, and still now, I listen to a lot of American music. Yeah. I mean, what was your nickname in school? Everyone had a nickname. I can't tell you that, Bobby. <laughs> I can't tell. Lady I can't, something, innit? I can't tell. You know, back in the day, we had a lady something. <laughs> oh. But we won't mention it. So yeah, we won't. <laughs> when did you decide, okay, I'm going to pick up a mic? 2018. So it's a recent thing? Mm hmm Okay, so it's not been like you, back in the day when everyone was rapping, it's just, it's just a recent thing. Yeah, it's a recent thing. We'll get into that. But you say, okay, Lil Wayne, Fabulous. What about sort of R&B? Was you, was, you, was you singing as well? Is it just... No, nah, straight rap. But I listened to I listened to R and B. Back then it was like Brandy. Yeah. Like that was probably like my favourite R and B singer then. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I mean you had a scary incident, which I should say. Mm -hmm. So you've grown up in Dulwich, both parent household, everything's good, everything's well. How did it transpire for you to end up getting a conviction for conspiracy to rope? Because I got a conviction for that and I got eight years in jail so eight years yeah I spent eight years in jail so what happened talk uh, us through it um I met a guy I was start right so I was dating a guy and he was making money on the roads and at the time it was the Securical vans so that's what he was doing that's he what was, I went to jail for as well actually. oh is it yeah, same thing. okay so yeah so he was going out there robbing the vans um, and obviously me seeing the amount of money that he was making from this, I was, I was young at the time. I was like 18, 19. I, I wanted that money for myself, if that makes sense. Mm. So yeah, I just, I just asked him, um, how can I, how can I get in on this? And then, um, yeah, so I started the first time I started driving so he got you to be the driver. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, was you not scared? Because I've been on those robberies, right? Yeah. 
And a lot of times I was the gateway driver, and this is everyone laughs at this. I was only the gateway driver when the car was automatic. I only drive automatic cars. <laughs> I could never drive manual, right? But was you? I mean, what made you think? Okay, yeah. Did you have your license? Yeah. Oh yeah, your license. Yeah. Cool. I didn't have my license as well, to be fair. But yeah, mindset of a young girl come from Dulwich, mm-hmm. all of a sudden say, "Yo, I want to be the gateway driver." Like, talk me through that. How easy? You just seeing the cash was. Is, is that all it was? Yeah, do you know, I, I feel like I'm someone who takes risks. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like I learn through experience. So at the time, I probably didn't see what the consequences were because I'd never experienced anything like that. Okay. And I'd grown up around a lot of males and this, is, this was like the things that people were doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, they no, not really to say that anyone had careers at that time if that made sense no one knew what they was really doing it was just like okay we, we gotta make money yeah um and yeah i just feel like i'm a bit of a risk taker but that's crazy to actually because it takes a lot of heart because for me to do that easy like i used to listen to young jeezy put young jeezy fuck motivation <laughs> 101 and that would guess me to go and do it it wasn't the thing i said i'm just gonna do it so what was what motivated you when you're in the car i know your heart must have been sitting off or was um, you never scared do you know what, yeah, and this might sound a bit arrogant, but at the time, it wasn't, um, I wasn't afraid. Okay. Um, and it, I think that's because of the adrenaline. Adrenaline. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was never, it was never a thing of like, oh, what am I going to do if this, if I get caught or if this doesn't go well? That wasn't my mindset then. And I also think because of the age I was, I wasn't thinking about that. So when you done, you kind of first one. Mm. You received the cash. Yeah. Did it bump you a little bit? I remember when people knew we, they didn't used to get as much cut as everyone else. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know? At that time, um, there was only a small, a small s- circuit of them. Yeah. So there was like three. Yeah, there was three guys and probably on the first move. Yeah. And then as it expanded, that's when more people jumped jumped on. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about 06, 07 time. That's at the time, was not it? What, what, was it the same era, 06, 07, nah, 08? it was... Oh my God, I don't even want to tell you my age. <laughs> um, it wasn't... It was, it was after 06, 07. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So people are still doing them. I thought they all cut out. No, no, no. Yeah, it was quite a bit after that, actually. Okay, wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, talk us through getting caught. What happened? Um, so the move, the move done, we've got away... We've parked up um, to go and cut the thing open. And this wasn't like the normal spot because we'd gone out of the ends now. So it wasn't like local. We traveled, we traveled further. Mm -hmm. So one of the guys was like, yeah, I've got a spot round where I'm at, blah, blah, blah. It's quiet. So we've got there. But it was like, you know, when you go into a close and there's loads of garages, but the houses are quite far away from the garages. Mm -hmm. Um... And it was just really quiet, I remember. And I was thinking, something something doesn't feel right. You know, you just get that feeling or that gut. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, something doesn't feel right. So I ended up staying in the car. And so they've all, they've got out of the car. They've gone to do what they're doing. And then I heard sirens. And my, my first thing was like, what, like, what do I do now? And you didn't I, blow out? No, I didn't blow out straight away because I was like, the guy that obviously I was dating at the time, I was like, I can't leave him. So now I've got to calculate how I'm going to get his attention, him in the car, and get out of this without being caught. Yeah. So. Would you have left the other two though? Yeah, because I wasn't the only person driving. Okay, okay. Because at that time, it was there was a few people that jumped on, so it wasn't just me driving. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so then two police cars pulled in, but they've pulled in after me. Okay. So they've gone past me. So then I've had the opportunity to, to drive out and he ran off. So he didn't run towards the car. He ran in the opposite direction. So yeah. then I just drove out and I've gone around the corner and the, the guy who said, let's, let's do it here. He lived around the corner. So we've gone, we've gone to his... So it's just me and him and another guy who've basically got away, let's just say it as yeah. that. And I was wearing, I was wearing a, I, was wearing, I remember I was wearing a red t-shirt and I was like, let me change, let me 
give me another T-shirt to wear. So I put on another T-shirt and I got in a different car. And I was like, I'm going to go back and check to see if my man's... I know, I know, I know, I know. Because I was like, I've left, I've left him. So I was like, no, I'm going to go back and see if I can find him. Like, now I'm, I'm in a different... Are you, so that means to cut you. Are you thinking... This is a movie, like, yeah, <laughs> the hero wife going to sit ride or die, they're gonna make a movie about this. <laughs> bon- Bonnie, Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> you are a smart girl, I Um Yeah, not not like the whole movie thing, but I just feel like I'm a very loyal person, innit? And I've if I've seen you I've seen you get out of this mess. So I'm not thinking you're you've been arrested. So what are you gonna go and find? What are you gonna look for? Him. <laughs> then what happened? So yeah, so I've gone back there in another car, but I've not. Par- I haven't driven back to the scene of the crime, mm. but I've parked up, and yeah, I've got out the car and I've started walking. And as I'm walking, I'm getting closer and closer to where we were, but I've stopped kind of like so I can oversee everything that's going on, yeah. so I can see the police talking to a couple of the guys, whatever, but I couldn't see him. Mm. So I'm thinking like, where, like, where is he? Like, where? So then as I'm walking back to the car, a police officer will come and stopped me. Yeah. And he was like, oh, hi, like, what, what are you doing around here? And I was like, oh yeah, just, just going to my friend's house, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, come, there's been an incident. And I was like, oh, when, like, why, what's happened? And they've said like, obviously there's been a crime committed. They've identified, um, one of the people being a female in a red a red top, but obviously by this time I'd gone changed. I'm now in a white t-shirt. Yeah. Um, and the officer is like, "Can I take your name?" Um, yeah, you know the ordinary checks name, and what address. What name did you give him? No, I gave them my real name because at this at this time I'm thinking like, yeah. Madame. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. What would me giving a fake name have I done? I can't lie, that judge would have murdered you. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get to there. We'll get there. You've kind of given them everything, anyway. You give them your real name. Yeah. Go ahead. So obviously, oh, have you ever been arrested before? No, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, yeah, they just said, we're going to have to take you down to the station for questioning. And I'm like, and even at this time, yeah, I'm not even like, I'm worried. Yeah. I'm worried. I'm worried at this time. But I'm thinking... I'm the only female at, at this point and they haven't they haven't made any ties that I know these people that they've arrested or whatever. So I've gone down to the station um, and as I've come in the station, they've taken me in the room to do the fingerprints and take your picture and I've seen my guy. Mm. So and like we've literally, and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me like, how the hell have you been arrested when you got away? Like that's, I knew what he was saying while he was looking at me. And did he look at you as well? Like, oh, please don't snitch. (laughs) (laughs) Um, no, he didn't. Well, I don't know. Maybe he did think, think like, oh my God, like, is this girl going to say something? Cause he was, um, not a lot older than me, about three years older than me at the time. Um, yeah, but I didn't snitch. Um, I just said I didn't know anyone, basically. And then when obviously all the paperwork and the evidence came back, one of the guys that was on the move said it was me. I I oper- I I constructed this whole this wow. whole this whole operation. Wow. Well, so what got you in the end? Cell site evidence. Yeah, the cell site. See, that's 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 what got us. Cause you think well, I weren't there, but we don't know about cell site. No one teaches no. anyone about cell site. No. Like, oh, well, <laughs> Your phone was here. That's not my phone. Okay, why does this phone call your dad and mum and text them? Why is it registered to you? Yeah, so it's all peak. So in the end, I mean, when they've come with that evidence, did you get bail that day? Um, no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I was, I went to court the next, no, I was in the cell for 36 hours and then I got taken straight to Camberwell Magistrates. And did you get bail from the magistrate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... What was the conversation with your mum and dad? <sighs> um, so these... So you, see, you know how I was saying that at, at no point was it scary. Mm. Now it's scary. Because I'm now having to say to my 
parents who have done the absolute most and best to upbring bring me up as a respectable woman in society and I'm now having to explain to them why their 19 year old daughter is on bail for a robbery crime so I just said like I didn't I didn't do it like what else do you say like what else do you say to your to your mom and dad at that point I just said I, I didn't do it I don't know what they're talking about um and I wrote like from that point did they come and raid their house yeah so they come but they only they only searched my bedroom okay so they didn't raid the whole house they just come and search the room um they didn't find anything yeah so at that point it's like I'm more because I've disappointed my mum and dad Was if that makes sense with them about the people you're hanging around with um or no because they knew they obviously knew the guy I was dating okay. and they obviously now knew that he was involved. So their first thing is like, this guy who's what, three years older than you has coerced you into, into this. And I've never had a conversation with my dad about it. Like he, he's never had a conversation with me about it. Even at the point of them saying to me, well, how has this happened? He didn't speak. Like he hasn't spoke, he didn't speak. Uh, how, how, did that, how did that make you feel? <sighs> Do you know, my dad is like he's a he's just a he's just a man of few words. So even at that time, it's like without him saying anything, I know like I know how disappointed you are. I know that I've I've let the family down. Like I know all of these things, and you don't have to say anything. But you see someone that gives you silent treatment. It's worse than you having an argument with someone. So. Here, by him not speaking to me, because I don't even think we spoke throughout the whole process from me getting arrested till I was convicted. Like, Is he the one that's from Mauritius? No, no, no. He's from Jamaica. Okay. So, yeah, he didn't speak. So imagine like a silent treatment for a whole year. Wow. And it's, and it's like my mum's like, my mom's a proper, like a, she's a... She's just a lovely woman. So my mum's always had my back. So I know that I can talk to my mum about things. And she's saying like, oh, your dad, your dad's not, you know, I don't know how he's going to get over this one kind of thing. Because I was a bit of a rebellious teenager anyway. I mean, I'm going to talk about that because yeah. I've got a 14-year-old uh, daughter now. Uh, she's going to be 15 in two months. Oh, gosh. And she went <laughs> on her first date in June, sorry, in February for Valentine's Day. A guy asked her out kind of thing. Yeah. When was you kind of comfortable speaking to your parents about relationships? And this, and you said that they kind of knew about this older boy at the time. Mm -hmm. Was there something where you were always open with them about talking about relationships? I think when I got to year 11, yeah. so like 15, 16, because at, at that point, not that to say that you, you know who you are, but you, you're kind of coming out of the puberty stage and becoming a young woman as to say that. So I think at that point, that's when I was comfortable to speak about relationships with my mum. I don't even think now at the age I am, I'm comfortable to speak about relationships with my dad. Yeah. But yeah, at that age, so good good luck, Bobby. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to be fair, me and her are pretty cool in terms of we have, even when she, um, the guy asked her right, she said, what do you think about this? This guy has asked me to go. I'm like... She I, came and asked you? Yeah, she came and asked me. We had a conversation about it. And I didn't know. Wow. I, I spoke to him on the phone. He was very respectful. But, yeah. Did just, he know who you were? Yeah, apparently. Uh, that's, he, that's why he was, was, he was respectful. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. But, but I always said it's very brave of him as well. Because you know who I am. So you're still saying you want... Going to ask him, like, why do you want to go out with my daughter? That's what you asked? Yeah, I said, he, he said, I don't know. So I'm like, well, you don't know, so you just go out with any girl. He's like, no, 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 because I like her. I'm like, all right, cool, say no more, say no more. <laughs> so, I mean, let's move on, let's move on. So, <laughs> like, we'll go back to the court case now. So it's, it's gone to court. Did everyone go guilty? No, no, no. Um, I, Me and another guy went guilty. And your boyfriend at the time? Oh, yeah, so he didn't go guilty. But here, watch it now, Bobby, yeah? So... I've, I've pled guilty now. Yeah. So he's thinking, cool, what am I going to do? He's now going to say, because I've gone guilty, that it's me. Yeah. Everything's me. Like did, she did you have that conversation? No. And because it's only when I... Did I even go to the trial of them? It's only... Yeah. So it's only... 
because I've gone guilty, I don't have to go trial now. Mm. In the trial, he's he spun a story and he said like, I've basically linked him up with the connect the plug and he was going to buy it. So he's not saying that he, he's saying he's guilty of another offense, not of this one, yeah. but he's used my name in it to say that I've, I've orchestrated the link between him and this person that he's going to meet up with. I mean, I, I understand, I understand. But I what guess, do you understand? No, 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 I'll tell you, I understand the point that if he had a conversation with you and said, look, Mimi, you have gone guilty, mm -hmm. so therefore you're, you're convicted anyhow, right? Mm -hmm. I still got a chance to get away with this. So if you just agree to say, you know what? Like, yeah, I just connected you guys, then call back. Because he's done it without telling you. Because that's what happened in my case. In my case, I, I went not guilty, but, mm. but even when I went not guilty though, I kind of helped other people who were guilty to say, nah, they weren't with me when I got caught. So I understand what he kind of done, but he should have had a conversation with you first and not just no. done it like that. He didn't have a conversation with me. Yeah. So for you, when you're listening to that in court, you're like, what? Mm, what's this? Do, yeah, like, you know, I'm like, huh? What? The? Okay. And in the end, how long did he, did he get? He got three years. Okay, not too bad. He got three years. And mm. what was your sentence? Before I mean, before you tell your sentence, was you kind of, was you scared? Was you thinking, oh my God, I got to prison? I, I did your solicitor kind of break it down to you? My solicitor was like, you're not going to go to prison. Okay. So in the back of my mind, I've had, I've had that like, okay, I'm not going to go to prison. But then I'm thinking, this is not, because they moved the case from Crown, not Crown, Magistrates to Crown. To, to Crown. Yeah. So they've moved the case from Camberwell to Old Bailey. Oof. So do you understand? Mm. So, and if you if you understand like the court and the, the justice system, the Old Bailey they hold the big cases there. But I'll be because I went Old Bailey as well. But when when they first told me Old Bailey, I was like, ah, because my first one was the Kings and Crown Court. Mm. But what they've said because Old Bailey judges deal with the most severest of crimes, murders. Yeah. They take everything seriously. So right. when they come into sentencing, they'll do it according, not because the judge, the judge is being a prick. So sometimes guys at Old Bailey can work in your favour. Okay. Yeah, so... But that's the only thing, like, I was like, Old Bailey is a serious court. Like, a lot of serious cases happen here. So the, the, there is a potential that I'm going to go to prison. But my, my solicitor is telling me, you're not going to go to prison. Like, Did your parents come with you to court? My dad did not come. Wow. So the only person that came with me to court was my mum. Mm. So what did your sister say at the time? What, what, what did your sister say? It goes back to me being the, the rebellious middle child, Bobby, yeah. because it's like my sisters are like, oh, that's that's what she's like, isn't it? Like mm. she's just a she's just a bit rebellious, isn't it? Mm. And my little sister, she was Yeah, she was she was like in school, secondary school still. Okay. So I don't think she really understood what was going on. Yeah. But my older sister, yeah, she, we, I don't even, we haven't even had a conversation about it. But obviously, as I've got older, she just realised that, oh, that's, that's just who you are, isn't it? Like, mm. you'll go out there and you'll take risks. That... Come on, Beckham, girl. <laughs> Dulwich, Dulwich. <laughs> so, I mean, so, day of sentencing, when the judge says, what's the, what's the actual sentence? So, I've got a suspended sentence. Yeah. And I got 80 hours community service. Okay. Did you breathe a sigh of relief? Yeah. Of, yeah, of course, because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to prison. That was obviously the only thing that I was worried about at that time. So uh, did, 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 Was it a thing then when obviously you got that break now and you're like, you know what, fun this, never doing crime again? Or did it become an addiction? Because for me... Even though I got away with some sometimes, it became an addiction because I was used to the money. Which you still tempted to go back? Not, uh, not tempted to go back and commit that same crime. But... Make money. To make money. Mm. That's, and I don't think... Do you think making money... The, the, the idea of making money is the addiction? Or... Because I think for me, I don't think people are addicted to the outcomes of their criminal behaviour. I think they're addicted to the feeling they get when they're doing it. Nah, no, 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 I like the money. I used to be scared to go and do the robbery. Not everyone, but I feel like, because it, for example, you, people that go out and stab and shoot and all these things, like 
you're not making no money from that. Mm. So what what's 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 driving you to keep going and doing that? Like what are you getting out of that? I think that's yeah, I think that's more to the gang affiliation kind of thing. When it comes yeah. to when you you doing things illegally to make money, mm. I think for me especially I didn't enjoy that part of it. I enjoyed the outcome. Oh yeah, now I've got five bags, now I've got ten bags. Yeah. But when I'm doing it, I always had a conscience. I used to feel bad. I used to kill myself. Like, oh, I remember did you? That, I think I speak about it in one of my um, early stories that I do. Like when I done my first ever robbery, I went home and cried because I felt so bad at the time. Because what it, did it you rob? Just rob some random you in the West. All of us were ro- ro- robbing for his phone. It's like teenage days. Okay. So it's like at that time, it's like. I've always had that conscience kind of thing. So, so for me, it was always about the outcome, the money kind of thing. But anyway, moving on. So wait, wait, can I just say something though? Go because um, that's understandable because you've intentionally hurt somebody. Yeah. But you see committing a crime like the Vans, you're not actually hurting anyone. No, 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 100%. I, used to, I, I mean, that's us justifying it, right? <laughs> I, I used to justify it, right? I used to go, wait, I'm rubbing the vans. Like, it's They're going to get money. this it's money back. They're going to get it back. Yeah. But what I, when I was in jail, I'd done the victim awareness course, course right? Mm. So that man now, or that woman now that you've robbed, even though it's not his money, how have you traumatised them? Are they safe now to continue wanting to do that job again? Now, does he go home, has nightmares and, and he's fears? So now, every time he sees a black person, does he react differently? And does that make, how does that make his wife feel that maybe mm. he came back home crying and now his kids might... So there's so much things the teachers doing victim awareness where you just think, oh yeah, I robbed the security van, but that guy now might not even want to have that job. Now he mm. can't work nowhere, can't pay his bills. So okay. there's more kind of to it kind of thing. So, but like I said, different horses for different courses. Yeah. Guys, don't rub boxes anymore. It's not worth it. It's definitely not worth it. But yeah, so like I said, so now you're kind of, you're free from that. Um, you're back to go and live your life. What was your kind of goal and ambition at this time now? Like, what, what was you thinking? Okay, what do I, what, uh, what I want to go and do? Like, what, what was your thinking? So at that, uh, that age, so I just, I just started uni. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've gone to uni. So now I'm like, cool. But even at that time, Bobby, I still didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. I feel like I went to university because to make my parents happy and yeah. always to have a fallback plan, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Because going to uni and getting a degree, it's almost like, oh, you're, you're never going to be out of a job. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I didn't finish uni anyway. What are you studying? Uh, English language and drama. Okay, where, 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 where uni did you go? Kingston. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't finish uni. Um, yeah, right. for a long time, I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so, I f- yeah. I know, I know I've seen some clips before mm. saying um, a guy has made you change your ways and thinking because you suffered a heartbreak. I mean, before we move on to that, like this guy from jail now, where is he? Do you still, are you still in contact? Did he still shout at you? Like, well, going, oh, Mimi, are you repping now? Or is it a thing that <laughs> it's just like... Um, yeah, like he found me on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I'll tell her, like, a, f- a few people that he knew found me on Instagram. I was like, well, you know, my girl's rapping, blah, blah, blah. And then he's hit me up on Instagram. Um, but he's on this thing of, like, can I take you out? And I'm just like, huh? <laughs> he might be reformed. No, he and I, I genuinely believe that he is reformed. But you see, once you're over something, mm. like, going back to it just seems like, it just seems like you're moving. You're, you're not. You're not excelling. You're. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. But he's like he's cool in it. Like if he calls, well, not he calls me. They don't even have a number. But if he if he shouts me, I'm polite and I'm respectable. Yeah. But I'm I'm never gonna go back there. It don't make no sense. Yeah, I hear you. So moving to this next guy then. That. What happened? Um. Oh. <laughs> So we, we'd known each other for a very long time. So we met when we was like 14. And for a very long period of time, we were just friends. And when we kind of decided to get romantically involved, that's when everything went pear-shaped. And because he's quite a, I want to say, a, I don't want to say a public figure, but he's known, isn't it? Like, he's, he's known. So... His, his perception of how he wants his woman to be, 
yeah, it just it just didn't it just didn't work. Like he wanted his woman to be a certain way. He'd obviously been in and out of jail for for years, so his idea of reality and stuff is a bit distorted. So yeah, it was just a it was. I just feel like he had me there because I was useful. Like, do you know what I mean? Like he'd ask me to do anything, I'd do it. And then it was like, oh, one day he just turned around and he'd come out of jail and like two months later he said to me. He's like, I don't know if I can wake up to you every morning. What? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And at the time, like, I'm like... He doesn't know if he can wake up to you every morning. Every morning. For the rest of his life. Like, that's, that's what his whole thing was. How was that as a confidence booster? Confidence? Like, I feel like at that time... But throughout being romantically involved with him and being with him, it was always... Do you know someone that's like... Oh, tells a joke, but there's some truth behind it. As That's the kind of person he is. Listen, there's no, uh, what's the saying? Uh, true other things said in jest or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's how I feel like he was as a person. Like, And I could never be doing better than him. Mm. I'd, he'd have to ground me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, But I'd, I'd known him to be like that. And I feel, I feel like I just kind of dealt with that the best way I knew how. But now I've known you for, at this point, 10, 10 12 years. Like, do you know what I mean? So even hearing that from someone that you you love, it's it's not a nice feeling. It's not. And I remember I called my friend, because I was in his house. I've called my friend. He said what he said. He's now building up a spliff. And I've called my friend and I've said to her, and she's like, get out of that house now. She's like, just get out of that house. She's like, get out of that house and don't come back. And I literally left at that, that time. And then I didn't speak to him. And then I started rapping. So that that, that yeah, rapping. that was like the deciding factor of like I'm not getting back involved with this guy. Like you've really What's the first beat you put on hit him up? <laughs> no, no. Eva. I'm gonna write this bar. <laughs> Won this man. What what was it? Uh, it weren't even a beat. I literally just wrote everything that I was thinking down on down on paper. Mm. Cause I used to write poetry in it. So yeah. I'm I'm I know what I'm doing. And I just wrote everything down on a piece of paper. And I've I've seen my brethren like a week later and I've said to him, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna rap. And he was like, What? And he's like, Why? And I was like, because he obviously knew what was going on, and he's like, Oh, let me hear what you wrote. Mm. So then I'm I'm telling him, I'm like saying what I wrote, and he was like, Oh, you need to get a beat and you need to structure this so you you know so you know what you're doing basically yeah. um and that's that's what happened and i remember i dropped a couple freestyles on instagram and i'm dissing him like do you know what i mean like, and that's that's how people are like oh like what was she saying and because he's a known guy immediately if you knew me you knew who i was talking about mm. so now people are hitting him up like oh you know my girl's rapping and she's saying blah, 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 and, blah, blah, blah. and now... I mean, off camera, you're going to let us know? You guys know? Off camera, you're going to let us know? <laughs> going to be intrigued now. But yeah, go, go ahead. Um, yeah, so... So then it's like... He's then called my phone. He's called my phone and he said... He, on, a bad, on a bad boy thing, mm. like, I'm going to come to your mum's house, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know where my mum lives. Like, you've known me for... 12, 13, 14 years. Like, yeah. You can come to my mum's house, what are you going to do? But at this time, you know when you feel like you know someone you can push your boundaries? Yeah. So I'm on the phone like I'm a gangster. And I'm like, come on then, come to my mum's house. Like, come on, like, what? like what's going on? Then you're like, please don't come. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I just, I just knew him so well. And, but now I've, I don't, because I've disrespected you. So I don't know how you're going to act in that situation. Yeah. But I felt at that time, like, I'm so gangster that you can't do nothing to me. Like, you're not going to come and do nothing. And it was a, for a few times, it was like a back and forth of him ringing me. Why are you saying this? So people are calling me. And then I was just like, I, it is what it is now. Like, this is what I'm doing. And you, you get over it or you don't. Mm. And what's happened since then? Um, I don't speak to him. I don't speak, and it's not, it's not beef, it's not nothing, like, if I see you, it's, it's what it is, isn't it, but. I mean, so you dropped these freestyles, I know I've seen mm. a, a three of them, and I was like, rah, she's cold. How mm. did your parents hit your new career? Because, like, girl from Dulwich now, pressure gone to, nearly gone to jail, <laughs> now you're rapping. <laughs> like, what, like, what's going on? 
Uh, my mum was proper like excited about it. Like even when I'm when I first like done a few of my video shoot, she'd like I'd send her all the pictures and she'd put them in like little books so like I've had like memories of this shoot or this shoot. And my dad was just like, "Why are you rapping?" <laughs> and I'm like, "You listen to to rap." Like that's what I grew up in in the household. Like I've heard you listen to Little Kim and Foxy Brown and all of this. And he's like, "Yeah, but I don't want my daughter rapping." So, my mum's, and she's still very supportive of it. My dad's just like... very from a like, very conservative background, Jamaican? Mm, yeah. Like, yeah, I would I would say that. Um, yeah, but... Has he, has he listened to any of the tracks at all? Um, no, like, if I sample something that I know he'll know the song of, I'll, I'll be like, oh, dad, what, what sample is this? Mm. Like, have a listen. But he's not going to sit there and listen to any of my tracks. No way. I mean, like, like I said, I mean... <laughs> You're, you're bubbling up. You're starting to do freestyles. You're getting yourself out there. My one disappointment in you, which you know I'm going to bring up. Uh-oh. My one disappointment in you. Right? Can I get my water? Yeah, get your water. Oh, okay. Get your water. Get your water. Right. Take your time. I will. I will. <laughs> HD. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. So... T Shardy, right? Yeah. Young girl from, I think she's from East London. Mm-hmm. She messaged me a few times about, oh yeah, um, um, how much is promo and so on. And I'm like, this is the promo, blah, blah, blah. But I thought, right, this girl's quite cold. So um, she done the promo the first time, done it. Then I listened to more and I said, you know what? Actually, you're actually very super talented. I'm not even gonna charge you promo, you know? Like, I'm, next time you got a free star, send it to me, I'm gonna pull it out there. And when I heard it freeze, I was like, rah, this is cold. I've gassed it up, right? I said, rah, this there is the best female rapper in the UK. Mimi jumps into my DMs. But me, that's a bit <laughs> brazy. Right? That's a bit brazy. Like, you can't be calling her the best female in the UK. Like, we're all out here doing our thing. I'm like, okay, say no more. I, I don't mean, know if those are the, the exact I words mean, that so, I so, used. So, but around, around okay, that conversation. Yeah. I mean, how did you when I mean when you heard her bar, like what was it about that you got no, she's not she's not If I'm being totally honest with you, Bobby, yeah, I didn't even listen to the whole freestyle. Okay. So but because of how you've come on the internet mm. and said like this is the best female in the UK, that's a very bold statement and accusation to throw out there mm. when I've never heard of this person. So that's why I come in your DMs, like, hold on, like, where, where are you, what are you basing this on? And that's when I thought, she must be related to Bobby. <laughs> I, I thought, I honestly thought, like, it's Bobby's little know cousin. Her from Adam. That's, that's what I thought. And I was like, this, this, what, this is, this must be a family thing, like. I don't, I don't know the girl from nowhere, <laughs> but I just thought, rah, the way she was spitting, I don't know if you guys, have you heard that T-shirt, but the way she was spitting, I was like, what, like, her, when she put the words together, the thing she said, I said, whoa, I ain't heard anything like this. So obviously, you know me, marketer, I'm like, okay, cool. You don't say, it. have your response. Yeah. You came with a response. Then everyone said, you know what? The best thing to do is let them go at it. Put you guys in a group chat. We said, mm. okay, cool. We're going to set it up. Um, you guys on the same beat. I gave you guys 10 beats to choose from. You guys go with each. So, and I understood where you come. You came from it. At. You said in a group chat, basically, you know what? Yeah, I, I, let's do this clash. But... Let's not go at each other and let's do it more as if we're empowering each other. Just, just let our not, lyrics speak for themselves, not, basically. Not an empowerment thing. That's no, 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 but, but let our lyrics speak for themselves. Let, let's not, attack, let's not uh, put women down. I think those were Yeah, so I'm, um, yeah, but that's not what I meant by it. What I meant by it is because when people go head to head in a, in a battle, mm. you, do, you, never, you never hear someone like, oh, like the lyrical ability of the battle was just, you know, it's always, did you hear what my man said about his mum or blah? Do you know what I mean? It's never, it's never based on the person's ability at that point. It's more, it's more about how, how much can you cuss someone? Yeah. And that's why, that's why I said to you in that, like, mm. I'm all happy to, to almost like a, I, I want to say a cipher, but not let, a cipher. Let, let your lyrics talk for themselves, basically. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so I, I, I was like, yeah, cool, whatever. And yeah. I come back in the group chat, I see T Shaw, they said, Well, I'm gonna go at you. I was, I was like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, when you saw that, how did that make you feel? 
you like, mm, this, look at this little girl. How did that make you feel? No, like, I, I get it. Like, I'm a, I'm a rapper myself, isn't it? But mm. my thing is, like, go, going at someone and saying this about this about someone or that about someone, it doesn't show you that you, you can rap. It, it just shows that you, you can say hurtful things. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm. So that the, the battle the, or the rap, whatever you want to call it, that wasn't going to do anything for me. And it's not gonna show. It's not gonna show everyone. Oh, she's she's an amazing, talented rapper, or she's the hardest in the UK. Mm. Because it's gonna be based on. Did you hear what my girl said about her? Mm. Yeah, like the <laughs> next day you said, you know what? I just, had a meeting with management. Yeah, and we're kind of not on it. Is that something you're still sticking by, or is that something? The that management, can... are, the management are here. You can ask them. That's that's, that's that's what happened. T. Shardy is coming <laughs> for any girl's throat. So management, what are we saying? Let the public decide when the music comes. Just the music. Just the music. Just the music for now. Okay, I hear ya. I hear ya. I hear ya. But we're, we're, we're hopefully we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it happen one day. I mean, also Trillery came out yesterday with her um, interview on uh, Winners um, Talking Podcast. Shout out Winners Talking Podcast as usual. Big up Pound uh, Sterling. Big Doug and Pound Sterling. Mm-hmm. You've been on there as well, right? It's, no, no, I've been on there. there. Okay, no. guys. Not yet. Yeah, guys, make sure you, make sure you get her on there. So, I mean, what do you think of her claims that you know, she ain't got a top five female rapper? She don't really like. I'm going to have to be really careful about what I say right now. Do you know what it is, yeah? I don't know anyone that would mention Trillery when it comes to female rappers in the UK. Like, if you're talking rap in the UK, I don't think anyone would mention her. So for her to come out and say the, the, the female UK rap scene is meaty, it must be she. You're meaty then, because who's mentioning you? It was. You think it was clickbait? A hundred, like a hundred percent. But then I feel like it. It gets to a point like you can't. You can't throw around them statements if, if you're. I don't know. I don't know. Like I. I don't. Re, I don't listen to Trillery. So. So let's get you then. Who's your top five UK female? Females. Yeah. Don't say, oh, I don't know. I no, no, I'm not going to say I'm, I don't know, Bobby. But as of what I was saying before, like, I don't listen to a lot of UK music. So for me, no, if... if as things would say, don't politician me now. Don't I'm not going to politician you, but <laughs> okay. um, if we're talking, like, based on lyrical bi- ability alone, yeah. I'm going to say No Lay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Little Sims. Um, I'm going to throw Shabo in there. Um... IBD? Um, uh, what on lyrical? Like she makes good songs in it, but that's that's Cream. not. Cream. Who's that? Cream or RTM? Cream poster girl. Ice cream poster. I don't. I don't know who she is. Um, I'm gonna throw myself in there. Um, T-shirt, eh? I'm not gonna throw T-shirt in there. Sorry, Bobby. I know that's your cousin and everything, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not gonna throw that in there. Um. Oh, who Bricks? I don't. I haven't listened to her, so I would. I couldn't. I couldn't base it on that. Miss Banks. I do like Miss Banks. I do like Miss Banks. But top five lyrically. Mm, I'm not gonna say top five lyrically. Steph. I like Steph as well. Steph makes lyrically? bangers. I feel like old Steph lyrically. But pop star, superstar Steph, no. I mean, what would you say kind of your sound is then? Like, well, how, how are you going to differentiate between the music you're making and who, who do you cater to? What's your... Um, oh, do you know who I like? Madame Molly. I've heard a bit of her. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't say she's top five, though. Okay, okay. But yeah, so who, what would you say is your kind of sound and who's your target audience, kind of? Who's your market towards? <sighs> That's difficult because I make a lot of different kinds of music. And I don't think at this point they've seen enough of me to determine who my market audience is, okay. if that makes sense. Because like, I make songs where I'm singing, I make songs where I'm rapping, I make, I make a lot of different genres of music. So for me to put it in a bubble to say and say, this is, this is what, who my target audience is, because I might want to target an audience that doesn't even know I exist yet, okay. if that makes sense. But at the moment, 
I make real, I make real rap. Like I talk about experiences that I've been through or I've seen at, at this at this moment in time. But not to say that I can't rap and sing about other topics because I do. Like it's just not out there. Okay, I hear it. I mm. hear it. So what's coming up now? Twenty twenty three. We're halfway through nearly. May next month. A, what's the plan? That's 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 scary. You know, halfway through the year. The plan is to just release music, singles, freestyles. That's that's the plan for this year. Okay, and I see um, you're on a show next next Sunday. This Sunday coming. Twenty third. Yeah. Yeah. The fix. The fix. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. How many tracks you got ready for that? Three tracks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Anything else you want to let people know in terms of the fans, people who are first time meeting you today, people who do know you, people from school, any last kind of message or comments <laughs> you want to give to everyone? Um, check me out. That's that's one thing I will say. Right. Yeah. And what, what, what would be the go-to single for them to kind of say, you know what, check out all this freestyle, which one will be, be an introduction to Mimi? Um, if we're talking songs, I'd say Hate Me or Want From Me. That's like an introduction to, to me. Um, freestyles, there's too many to, to mention to even say, like, go for this one. But after I give you one today, it will definitely be this this one. <laughs> and lastly, mm -hmm. the name Mimi Monroe, where did it come from? Um, one of my friends used to call me Mimi, and I had a bit of a... So Mimi is not your first name? No, no, no. Okay. Um, I had a bit of a thing for Marilyn Monroe when I was growing up. Okay. Mm. There you have it, guys. Yes. That there was Mimi Monroe. Check her out. And that was another Big Eagle Media podcast. It's Mimi Monroe, realest bitch in the game. Big Eagle Media, Bobby Kasanga. Let's get it. Mmm. That's Monroe bitch in the car though Jay's body suit and some cargoes He got 10-10 flake in the cargo Put the car in sport when the car go Make money off squares, that's card though On the grind for your money, that's hard though Whips throwing like a boy off Marco And if you sweat for your money, that's cardio Dad prayed I'm more like my sisters They couldn't walk a mile with my blisters On these cats and I don't mean whiskers You can't mix my words, it ain't Chinese whispers Keep it shut, you don't know me If I did it out of love, you don't owe me On the grind like my first name's Tony And if I'm such a catch, why that nigga wanna throw me? I don't know mental health Know about mental wealth Educate my mind and I read to keep my mental stealth Know how bad that my mental's felt Now I pray to give my mental help I can't ever let my mental melt Mental fell, we're all living in a mental world Mental shell, I don't dance for no TikTok Heard your rollies faking it TikToks My nigga moves keys, he don't pick locks And if you got a small hood, you can kick rocks Kick rocks, this ain't the seaside The way I look, you would've thought that I stepped right out of a beehive I took a step back, now I'm looking at some friends with their green eyes Jealousy, hate, envy I can't help God, he's hitting in a frenzy I don't ever give a F so I'm not in Fendi I don't buy drip but I still stay trendy trendy I ain't from Shoreditch come against me you sure bitch real men are looking like a shortage I'll pay for a date then I'll pay my mortgage I'm cheeky they slept on me now I'm sleepy real meaty our friends on guys like Phoebe they can't reach me this ain't I Spice or Sweetie it's Monroe bitch with a me me he really thought I was feeling him I stay far from the fuckboy species I stay far from the fakes and fillers sell a fake bitch I don't miss no dinners sell a fake bitch you don't get no rilla all that money spent just to look like thriller had a lot of l's but i still be a winner no butt shot inches or fillers come to your ends and i still got hitters real hot bitch my heart's in a chiller please don't ask if i miss my ex when i got guys that don't miss my text instant replies no disrespect cry over man i don't skip my rest he wants smoke be my guest school of rap ace that test r.i.p get laid to rest when i come through to get made to rest i don't know fumes but i'm still plugged in slept on me i should tuck them in old niggas on my line trying to suck me in took some l's but my luck's just in Shit fucked me up So now I don't drink They'll pay money Just to see me sink Go to the booth And I let that sink Go to the booth Keep my mind in sync Wait, wait Why is this bitch still talking? Fake page on my gram She's stalking Guys money dance When I walk in If real was a currency I'd be balling Put your girl on hold When I'm calling Turn these rappers off Cause it's boring Turn these rappers off Cause I'm yawning If the money's right I ain't stalling Got all this money And you're still broke Put her against me And she will choke All the L's I took I still cope Put me in the deep And I will Flow. These chicks were obsessed, obsessive, needy, meaty, fucking on the bros that sleazy, easy, uh, sleazy, easy, uh. These chicks were obsessed, obsessive, needy, meaty, fucking on the bros that's easy, sleazy, uh, skeezy, sleazy, uh. 
Mimi, Monroe, really switching the game. Yeah!